Welcome to Dialogues for Change. Life is not a void to be filled. It is a plenitude to be discovered. Today, I would like to share with you some inspiring thoughts by Robert Vachon on the question of peace and of the correlated cultural disarmament. Been published in this beautiful journal, Interculture, they really do find very inspiring. Were we to achieve nuclear or military disarmament, would we have peace? I think not. For, as I said in 1972, at the North American Consultation of the World Conference on Religions for Peace, to approach the peace issue in terms of disarmament, development, and human rights is a Western and monocultural enterprise, even if there are also people from different cultures and religions who partake in this approach. Of course, it is a valid perspective, but it is not the only one in existence, nor is it necessarily the most important. There are others that have not yet reached the heart and soul of Western men and which are provided by Native American, African, Hindu, Buddhist, Chinese, or Arab civilizations. For instance, the Oriental world of Hindu and Buddhist persuasion is less concerned with disarmament than it is with aparigraha, non-greed, less with development and evolution than with karma, action, and yagna, sacrifice, or what could be called cosmic solidarity, less by democracy and human rights than by dharma, the cosmic order, responsibility, duty and what I like to term dharmacracy. Other similar instances could be drawn from other cultures, African, Native American, etc. That is why I submit that in order to have peace, a nuclear or military disarmament is not enough. We also need a cultural disarmament. I would even go further and submit that there can be no nuclear, no military disarmament without a cultural disarmament. For one of the deepest causes, not only of the arms race, but of conflicts and finally of the lack of peace, is not first and foremost the abuse of power on the part of a given culture, but the conviction that one's culture is superior to everybody else's, and that it should become the universal norm for everyone. The deepest reason for the lack of peace stems from the belief that reality, and hence peace, can be reduced to the understanding or consciousness we have, or can have, of it. Hence the need for a two-fold cultural disarmament. The first one is a horizontal disarmament. On the one hand, a horizontal one, which consists in a radical de-absolutizing and relativizing of our respective cultures, in the light of other cultures across the globe. This applies to all cultures, whether modern, western, or other. The focus of the process should be, however, on the best dimension of one's own culture and with the utmost faithfulness to the latter's unique and irreducible character. The issue, therefore, is not whether we should deny one's culture, affirm it or not affirm it. It is rather that of relativizing it in all its dimensions, not only in its socio-economic, legal, political and religious aspects, but also in its premises, whether epistemological, anthropological, or cosmological. I shall exemplify this latter with regard to the modern Western culture. It is strange indeed that, living in such a pluralistic world, we are so little concerned with reflecting on the intercultural foundations of peace. By that, I do not mean simply calling on people from different cultures to study the different ways of achieving peace but rather that we should equally make sure that the very question itself of peace be not exclusively posited and defined according to the criteria of one culture, but also of all the cultures existing in the world at the present time. No one culture or religion, however modern, traditional or cross-cultural it may be, is self-sufficient enough on the one hand to provide adequate solutions to the world's problems or to those of any human being, and on the other to even posit the question of peace properly. It is necessary to penetrate as deeply as possible into the various cultures of the human tradition, but even that is not 
enough. That is why we need a second cultural disarmament, which is a vertical cultural disarmament. There is also a need for a vertical cultural disarmament. It consists in liberating life, and hence one's own life, from the exclusive grip of one or all cultures, but by passing through them. Obviously, everyone wants world peace, but always one's own version of it, the peace of the civilized, the peace of the primal people, the peace of modern development and progress, a white peace, a black peace, an Islamic peace, an American Indian peace, an Asian peace, a Western peace, capitalist or communist, a Buddhist peace, a Confucian peace, a Christian peace, an African peace, etc. Religions think they hold the key to it, religious, theocentric or spiritual peace. The humanists likewise, a humanistic, secular or anthropocentric peace. The cosmic also, the ecological, cosmocentric peace of nature. Others talk of intercultural, global or transcultural peace. Others finally speak of transhistorical and cosmotheandric peace. One thing is obvious. Any statement on the subject of peace, however open and all-embracing we may conceive it to be, can never be other than particular and provisional. Peace itself, however, can neither be reduced to any one notion we may have of it, nor even to the sum of these notions. Peace is a notion which transcends each particular culture, as well as the sum total of cultures. It is a mystery which transcends the human intellect. Peace does not consist in merely preserving our traditional cultures, in opening up to modernity, nor even in accepting our different ways of life and coexisting in mutual indifference or resigned tolerance. It requires a meeting, an understanding, meaning standing under, a common horizon, a new vision. But this in turn requires that we acknowledge together a center which trans transcends the understanding we may or can have of it at a given moment in space and time. In short, in order to have peace, we cannot assume that we know what peace is, neither before, during, nor after our effort towards it. I hope that these thoughts on a approach to peace, which is an approach, a way, which is not a final goal to be met, but which reminds us to stay humble and open to the diversity and pluralism in the mystery of life, inspired you on this Monday, 1st of July, 2012. Thank you. <laughs>